Hello and welcome to the seventh exercise. Here is Daniel and we will today have a look at the exercise titled Learning and Planning. As you can read in the text, we will again use the inverted pendulum from the gym environment you already know from the last exercise. If you haven't done the last exercise, please have a look at the beginning because there's mentioned how to install the gym environment uh, because we need it for the inverted pendulum environment. It should also be noted that the parameter n, we already know from n step learning, has a different meaning in the context of planning. So now n defines the number of planning steps per actual step we take. For execution, please first import all this stuff here by executing the cell. And we will use for discretization the routines from the previous exercise you call discretized state and continualized action. If you don't remember what's going on in here, please have a look at the solution of the last exercise. In the first exercise, you should write a DynaQ algorithm to solve the inverted pendulum problem. DynaQ algorithm uh, consists of Q learning, we already know, and we've got also a model from the environment somehow available where in every step we can additionally learn from. For the standard DynaQ algorithm, the model is a simple memory buffer uh, from the experience we've got by interacting with the real environment. And in the DynaQ algorithm, in every step, we randomly choose from that model buffer to learn again. So we've got a few degrees of freedom here. We've got first the number of episodes. We can choose then the number of steps per episode and then n here in our case um, identifies the number of learning steps per step in an episode. And we should now compare the quality of the result for different number of episodes, number of steps and number of planning steps per episode. So what happens if we change these parameters here? To keep a fair comparison so that the amount of calculation stays the same, um, the product of all these quantities here should be kept constant. An interesting metric, for example, could be the execution time we get with a TQDM bar or even can get it with the time.time .time command, like mentioned here. Like already last time, we won't go through that co uh, code in detail, but <clears throat> mentioned or highlight something. So here, the um, DynaQ algorithm is defined as function to reuse it later. The interesting thing is we now have here a model a dictionary and the rest is you know, maybe similar to Q learning, but in the end here we iterate again till n, like we already learned, is the number of learning steps from the model per step. And what is important that here that you use different variables for state and action due to not overwrite something. In the end we give back here the cumulated reward and the policy we have learned. In the next cell, we've got a function to render the measurement and interact with the environment. In the default case, um, we do this here for 300 steps using policy pi. 
So let's, for example, use 5000 number of episodes here and 500 steps per episode. And an n equals zero, so we won't use any lookup table model at first to learn from. And this is like written here effectively Q learning. The product of all the parameters is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6. We will take constant. The next cell we will run the experiment training without planning, taking here an alpha of equal 0.5. 1, gamma of 0 0.9, epsilon of 0 0.1, and n equals 0 for applying Q-learning, 5000 episodes and 500 episodes per step. And as we can see below, um, this experiment took around about 6 minutes of time. So, and while executing this cell here we can run the experiment and see the result and as we've seen the q learning even already solve is able to solve the inverted pendulum problem so now let's uh, try the same experiment but with a different n so i've taken here n equals nine and the st the same number of steps per episode equals 500 so we can calculate uh, the number of episodes we um, want, we have to take from this equation above here. This has to stay constant with an unknown number of episodes here. And for our case, for an n equals 9, we've got 500 episodes we should run to keep the same number of calculations so in this cell now we call again the function with the same parameters but changed n to 9 and the number of episodes to 500 and we can see okay we also need around about six minutes of time at all so it's the same time approximately like we've used, uh, we've taken for the setting above here. So, and executing this cell here again with uh, runs the experiments now with the policy we've got from our planning model. And as we can see here, also with planning, it's possible to solve the task. So what's the benefit out of planning? Let's have a look at the accumulated rewards. And we see here in orange the accumulated rewards for our pl um, planning model. So here for these 500 episodes and an n equals 9. And the blue one is the simple Q learning with 5000 episodes and um, n equals 0. So in both cases um, the accumulated reward has a high variance but as we have shown um, the resulting policy works to solve the problem somehow. So why should we prefer which method? If we come pair um, both graphs here we will see that the orange graph is um, uh, smaller or not as long as the blue one so indeed we have to interact less often with our environment than in the case without planning this could be a benefit if maybe the interaction with the environment is a long process or somehow safety critical or maybe even due to test bench is not all the time available or so. In that case, planning gives the benefit that we can learn out of experience in that case here. 
So let's start with the solution of the second exercise. Mm, due to we are engineers, we may be in no better solutions than storing a large amount of state transition to learn from that lookup table model like we did in one. We can use differential equations to build up a state space model to integrate that model into our DynaQ algorithm. That should be done in the second exercise where um, our build-up class should work similar to gyms, so it should have a step and a reset method. The differential equations for the pendulum can be seen here. So um, the differential equation for the for the angular frequency is depending on the gravity constant on the length of the pendulum and on the angle we actually got um, on the inertia j and on the torque we give as an input the second one is quite trivial so the parameters are given below and we should use here Euler forward integration to simulate the dynamics of the system. So if we have a look at the forward Euler integration here, we know that the derivative part we got from the differential equation we already know. <coughs> And if you reorder the equation a little bit, like we will do below, we can calculate um, the value, for example, for the angular frequency in the step k plus 1 um, using sample time times the derivated angular frequency plus the angular frequency it was one step before. Also, the reward function we should use is given. Um, it is depending on the angle. So we get to pay something for an angle greater zero and uh, something for the angular frequency with some weighting factors. The S square is here for seconds, so uh, to keep unit constant. And we've got a uh, term for our input torque also weighted by some factor and that nm here is for the unit newton meter and our input and outputs are like above we've got the action of the torque we give and our stasis is given by the cosine and sine of theta and the angular frequency so first let's have a look at the class pendulum model we should write we've got the init function to define the um, parameters we've given above we've got a reset function step function the reset function like written in the description has a second input here called state where we should be able to initialize or to reset to a given state that helps us to compare our model to the external gym model we've got as real environment to get measurements from so as you see if we have got no state given we um, reset to a random position if we got it given um, we reset to the state we get from all. to be consistent with the like gym defined reward function or step function um, we've got the reward given like here like we have it in the equation and we have to uh, normalize the angle in the range we've given below only in that reward function to keep consistent with Jim here. The torque and uh, omega is eclipsed to the space we've got here. 
and uh, as we've seen below we've got here the calculation of omega k plus 1 out of omega k plus delta t times omega dot the same goes here for theta and we take now the following code here for debugging to compare the model with the gym environment. So we use as env the gym environment and the model our defined model and we reset here the model we've got due to the state we get out of the environment to get the same initial position and let this run for here 10,000 steps to see if there are difference available. And as you see below, here even after 10,000 steps, we have no difference in the reward or in the states here. So our model seems to be accurate. If you have a look at the differential equation again, and at the uh, sine of theta plus p, one could think, okay, um, instead of taking the sine and shift it uh, for, uh, by p, we can even change the sine here. But if you do so, you will get deviations uh, between our model and um, the gym environment we use as real measurements. This is a due to p in reality is an infinite number and um, NumPy or Python cuts it after a few digits. So we get issues here with numerical accuracy. So um, our point of view, it would be uh, correct to not shift by P and not use that negative sign in there um, to get rid of that numerical issues due to our real differential equation, which describes our real world. But um, we want to model, in that case, the gym environment. And due to in gym, it's modeled in a way like that. We will keep that shifting by P here in our model two to go consistent with them. Try it on your own to um, leave out that P and that uh, minus there and you will see down here that you've got deviations between our model and the gym environment. So in the next cell you will see our solution for the um, DynaQ algorithm as a function which uses here the, our model um, to learn from. If we compare now the DynaQ using our defined model with the um, model or planning from experience we have done in exercise one. We first here um, execute the um, function for a diner queue we have defined in the first exercise where the lookup table is used. And next we um, tr use the above defined function for training using the model we created for both um, experiments we take the same setting alpha equals 0.1 gamma epsilon we take 19 numbers of learning steps 30 episodes and 10,000 steps per episode the result can be seen in the plot below here. In blue is the uh, cumulated reward 
from learning from experience and in orange using our defined model for learning. And as we can see here, um, after 10 episodes, it seems that um, the accumulated reward is better and converges in the end faster than the um, learning algorithm which learns out of experience. So we can conclude that uh, having an accurate model of our environment leads um, to better and faster learning results. The following cell here can be used to run our experiment using the policy we got from our model-based learning. And we can see that the result in that case is quite well. If you now change the parameters here of our real model, so I've changed now M to 5 kg, G to 20 m per square second and L to 2 m. Then the model we learn from here is not representative anymore for the real physical model, which is in our case given by Jim. So if you redo the simulation, then you see a cumulated reward plot like this here and you see, okay, now the uh, model is quite worse than we had in the learning curve before. And also if you execute the experiment, you can make the same observation. Depending on um, how far away you choose the parameters from the real ones, you get better results where it still works or um, even worse results like one we've seen right here. And this is also dependent on the random initial start position. And this is the end of the seventh exercise. Thank you for listening.